what uh, the center does now in this case. Moving on to international news from the neighborhood, Sri Lanka is heading to the polls for the first time since an economic crisis roiled the nation two years back, triggered nationwide civilian-led protests and led to the ouster of the Rajapakse government. Voters in the island nation will be electing their next president from an all-male list of 39 candidates. Incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe, opposition leader Sajit Premadasa and Marxist-leaning Dissa Naike are the likely front-runners. Vikramasinghe, who is contesting as an independent, is trying to cash in on Sri Lanka's economic turnaround. He claims he took up the job when no one wanted to, but has the economy in Sri Lanka really turned a corner? What are the key issues uh, affecting the economy? Is this election a referendum on the austerity measures? What are the front runners really offering to the people of Sri Lanka? Joining us uh, right now, our author and journalist, Andrew Fidel Fernando. Uh, Andrew, let me begin by asking you, is uh, Ronald Vikramasinghe, the front runner, are the odds in his favour at this juncture? Thank you, uh, Parishit, for, for having me on, first of all. Uh, no, I, I don't think that uh, anyone thinks that Ranil Vikramasinghe is the, the front runner at this moment. Uh, there's been a, a huge kind of wave of support or an increase of support across the island for the National People's Power candidate, who is Anru Kumar in the Sanayaka. So if anyone is a front runner, it's, it's a very, very heavily contested election. It's an it's a election where there are three major contenders all taking votes of each other. So it, it's it's one that's really hard to predict. But uh, I, I don't think anyone is describing uh, Ranil as the front runner at this second. I'm in Gaul at the moment in the, in the southern province. Certainly everyone around this area seems to be uh, pulling towards Anur Kumar de Sanak. That, that situation would be very different in the north and the east, where Ranil and Sajid Premadasa are much more uh, much more more uh, popular. So I think it's it's a three-way race. It's one that's very difficult to call. Um, and if there is a, is a front runner, I, I don't think it is uh, Vikram Singh at this second. All right. You don't think Ranil uh, Vikram Singh is the front runner. Uh, by when do you expect the results to be out or results to be absolutely clear? So this is a, a fascinating uh, election because there is a chance that none of the three candidates will get 50% of the vote. So this is a presidential election where ideally uh, to, have, to claim to have a strong or even a decent mandate, you would get 50% of uh, the, the, the votes. Uh, and because there are three big contenders, it, it, it looks at the moment unlikely that anyone will get over that mark. What happens in that situation is that Sri Lanka has a preferential voting system where uh, you know uh, the two leading candidates after the first uh, preference is counted go off into a, essentially a runoff or a, a, a recount of the eliminated candidates' votes, uh, second and third preference votes. So it's it's a slightly complicated issue. I think this may be, if, if no one gets 50%, as many are predicting, it may go on for a couple of days. Uh, this may be the election where we spend the longest between uh, you know, ending ending of uh, of votes being cast and knowing for sure who the uh, the president is, probably around Monday or Tuesday, that will become clear. But uh, it is, yeah, it, you know, for any country, it's unusual to have have three major candidates and for a presidential election, you know, the the, the permutations are many. Right, Andrew. One one quick question before we let you go. Uh, do you believe that tax rates in Sri Lanka are a contentious issue in the voting process for citizens right now? Uh, more than tax rates, I would say cost of living is probably what is, uh, uh, you know, the big contention in Sri Lanka. You know, there's, uh, we obviously have, and, you know, it's not as if the economic crisis has, is passed. You know, there's Arutha, a, uh, a, policy think tank that's focused on the economy in Colombo recently came up with some statistics that 54% of Sri Lankans since the economic crisis hit in 2021 and 2022, 54% uh, of homes in Sri Lanka are food insecure. There's been an increase in the number of, of wastage and underweight children in, in many of these homes. So people are very much still paying the toll for economic mismanagement in the past, particularly under the Gotabe Rajapaksa presidency. So I think those economic hardships are probably the biggest uh, factor at the moment. There's also a very big anti-corruption uh, uh, initiative, or the, the anti-corruption is, is a big issue in this election. 
uh, which is why Anur Kumar who is, who, is pre, pre, who has presented a vision of the strongest change, has done well. He was a, a presidential candidate in 2019, only got 3% of the vote, but uh, now okay. has surged ahead. Uh, and so he's probably, that's, that's probably the reason why he's done that, because he's pre presented that, that notion. All right. Okay. All right, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Uh, we'll uh, keep looking out uh, uh, to you for the results of the Sri Lankan elections and uh, the impact it has on the economy. Moving on, India's impact.